The biggest thing that we do um, to try and be this fast and to try and be this ruthless is um, preparation. Now, we don't turn up on the start line thinking, OK, I'm going to give that little bit extra today because if you haven't given it prior to turning up, how do you expect to give it on the day? You know, you always hear people saying, oh, OK, it's the biggest, you know, we're going out, this is the biggest game of our lives, this is the final, let's give 110%. Well, if you haven't given 100% before, you're never going to give it. Um, and so for us, training really is almost harder than what we do in racing. When we're training, we push ourselves to the limit so that if, if we have to go there in a race situation, this is going to be like, oh, we did this a couple of weeks ago, this is going to be fine. Um, we've actually got a little bit of video here from, uh, from some of the training we actually did. Kia ora, welcome back. Rowing New Zealand is ending 2011 on a massive high. Seven months out from the Olympic Games, three of their high-performance athletes have broken world records in a single day. But Fiona Patterson and Peter Taylor's efforts have been somewhat overshadowed by another display of incredible power. Craig Stanaway has more. They're not fun, those machines, not even for a minute. Rowing New Zealand's traditional end-of-year test requires all athletes to row hard out for an hour, non-stop. Triple world champion Eric Murray responded by telling everyone he'd break the world record. He's now been going 50 minutes. Well, if he knows in his head that he's on target, then that certainly gives you a bit of confidence coming into the last five or ten minutes. It gives you a bit of a boost. Former Olympic single sculler Gary Reid is on hand from Concept 2, the world's leading rowing machine manufacturers, to ensure everything's legit. Verified records are on their website. I'd say he'd be under world record time, and he's holding it nicely, so he's in, yeah, he's in good shape, I reckon. Exhausted, unable to talk, it's his heart monitor that speaks volumes. So basically after 10 minutes he was, um, he was really working quite hard and he was actually able to maintain that, so that's, that's really quite impressive. So for 50 minutes essentially his heart rate was above 190 beats a minute? Um, pretty much, yeah, and he maxed at 200 and, um, 201 beats per minute. It's a real prick of a thing really. You know, it's... It's something Dick Toggs has introduced to the team to make them really push the limits. Typically at Rowing New Zealand, there's no fanfare. The only trophy for his efforts, a mop to wipe up his sweat. Craig Stanaway, one year. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that, I guess that video just gives you, A, it gives Eric's ego a wee boost. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And secondly, I guess it just gives you an insight into the mentality that we take into our training. And it, and it really is about preparation. We, we, um, I worked out, I don't, I'm not quite sure why, um, okay, a, a rowing race is two kilometres long, it takes approximately six minutes, and during that time you'll do 240 strokes. And I worked out over the previous four years, um, for every one of those strokes of the final, 240 of them, we did 15,000 strokes in training. Um, so, I don't know what that is, I can't work out 200, yeah, probably a, a number of iPads in the room, you can probably work it out. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, the idea is we, we do a heck of a lot of training. We train at the moment, um, we train six days a week, about, well, two or three sessions a day, usually two, so between 12 and 14 sessions a week, and each one will be between one and a half and two hours long. So, we, yeah, four to five hours a day of dedicated training, and then there will be you know, another hour or so of related activity around that, um, you know, physio, massage, that sort of thing. So it is a huge volume and um, it does take its toll. And, and in order to be able to complete the training, um, there are, we, we do have a good support system at Rowing New Zealand. We're all based down at Lake Karapiro near Cambridge and we do have, you know, we've got access We've, I mean, we've got pretty much every ist you can think of. We've got physiotherapists, we've got massage therapists, we've got psychologists, we've got physiologists, nutritionists. Um, you know, the, we, there are a huge amount of services. And we can, I mean, it's basically up to the individual to take from them what, what you will um, and, and what you want. And we do, that's what, that's, you sort of look at what value each one can add. And, and there isn't probably time to do, you know, do each one of those ist would love to have half an hour with you every single day. 
um, but there just isn't that time. So you've really got to prioritise and work out where you can get the best uh, the best gains from. And if we want to bring this back to another business analogy, is that we <clears throat> we bring the people around us that we see make us successful. So we have uh, the best trainers and the best physios and that sort of thing, so that we are going to get the best out of it because we believe what they bring to our program and to our mindset and our attitude um, is going to make us um, better people. Um, by having those people around you, then of course we feel good about ourselves. We know that they're bringing to the table the best things. Um, and that's one thing we've looked at too is the attitude that Hamish and I try and bring to our training and to our racing is is always trying to be the best, um, trying to do that little bit extra. We know that these people will go beyond. You know, If we ring them up or we talk to them late at night, they're going to respond. Um, it's not just going to turn up at nine and leave at five. Um, they're always trying to look far and beyond um, what they're going to do. Um, that support system is really good for us, um, and it's really made um, a lot of what we can get out of ourselves. Um, that there is um, our closest ever race. Um, from that, we changed all our mindset um, of how we wanted to go about it. Hamish you know, alluded to it before. This was probably the wake-up call of where we wanted to go to. Um, we'd been successful. Um, we'd won 2.9, 2.10, 2.11. Um, and really, we started getting down to the nitty-gritty of going into London. Um, London came upon us pretty quick. Um, you know, we sort of, we went away overseas and we were based in Switzerland before the Olympic Games. And we really had no idea of the hype that was building up in New Zealand. Sure, we did the promo videos and you know photographs and things like that before we left. But we were sort of stuck away. We didn't see the TV coverage. Yeah, stuck happening. away while it was winter. We were stuck yeah, away in Switzerland, yeah. Fine. But it was, it was really just you know about all we read on TV, you know, all we read in the, on our little iPads while we're sitting there in a the hotel, um, was just about, the, about what's happening coming into London. We counted down the days to we were going to get there. And it was really, we'd done all the preparation, um, and it was really now about turning it around and, and, and putting it on. You know, we've done all the work, but you've still got to turn up on the day to do it. Yeah, and that's, that was probably the hardest thing to get around mentally. Um, you know you've made a day when, yeah. when you're on a toy billboard. Um, <laughs> Um, that was a, it was the hardest thing. We, w we, were the be we were unbeaten for three years. We were going in as favourites. In fact, we were the biggest favourites out of any event at the Olympic Games. We were paying a dollar and four to win, um, which is, you know, that's literally safer than the bank if you do the math. Um, that, that's what they're banking on the return. And um, it, was, it was hard to take. It was, the, it, it was principally for me personally was around the fact that knowing that I should win and I'm good enough to win and I should, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. That's I guess that's the beauty of sport is that every dog has its day. I mean that's you can be the biggest favourite, but you can still get turned over, and th and that was hard to take was knowing that we'd done all this preparation, but I still had to go out and perform in the final, and we had to take that gold medal. No one deserves a gold medal as much as they may think they do. You've still got to go out there and take it, and. The way that we tried to mitigate that, I guess, was stacking the odds as far in our favour as possible. And that's really what we focused on, was making it so even if we weren't, you know, we could win that race at 97%. If, if Eric and I, if one of us woke up and we were a bit, you know, we had a cold or we were not feeling great, we could still go out there and get the job done. You know, we could win ugly. Um, and that was what we had focused on, was stacking the odds as far in our favour. So 99 times out of 100, you know, we will win that race. There's always going to be the chance you can lose, but um, you know we'd really try to mitigate that as much as possible. And the, I mean, the expectation—it's funny. I mean, as Eric said, we were overseas for um, a few months before the Olympics, and um, we were, I guess, hidden, and we were in a bit of a bubble, and we were hidden from that hype and expectation. But leading into the games in London, we obviously had a few media commitments and that sort of thing. And I guess the first thing that every single reporter asked you was you are or said to you was you are New Zealand's best chance of an Olympic gold medal are you aware of that pressure and expectation at home it's like well you know dang if I wasn't I am now <laughs> um, um, if I weren't sorry um, yeah it's uh, but the thing was no matter the pressure and expectation that was external 
we had far more, uh, we put far more pressure and expectation on ourselves. We were the ones that had worked for four years, we were the ones that had toiled away, and um, you know, it would have been hard to take had we come unstuck at that final hurdle. So although the expectation was there, it paled in comparison to anything we put on ourselves. Yeah, it was, it's a funny thing, you know, that pressure's put on you, but we just tried to eliminate that as much as possible by ourselves, by having the confidence of what we've done before. Um, trained really hard, turned up, and on the very first day of the Olympics, we went out and broke the world record. Um, massive surprise to us. We knew we were going fast, but we didn't think we were going that fast. Um, we broke the Olympic and the world record. It used to be 6.14, so we dropped it by um, six seconds. And of course, <laughs> one thing we really truly believe that it just really added another psychological bullet to the rest of the t uh, competitors. We'd been working to a 6.14 benchmark the whole time, um, trying to get as close to that as possible. Every piece you do, even if it's a shorter one, you cut it down, you know, want to do 3.07 for 1,000. And of course, on the very first day of the Olympics, your benchmark that you've been working towards for the last four years has just been shifted six seconds. So if you were struggling to get to it before, it's going to be a long way now. Um, and we truly believe, and well, we hope that it just sent everybody like, OK, we're racing for second and third. Um, to have that psychological advantage over everybody else was, was massive for us. It gave us confidence, um, but the fact was that nobody had ever beaten us before. Um, everybody had that self-doubt in their mind, and you, you always hear people talk about it, that as soon as you have an element of doubt creep into your mind, um, it's over. And basically, if you don't believe that you can beat another person, then you're probably not going to. And the fact was that they had never beaten us before, so they were probably, and we were hoping they were never going to do it um, again. Uh, so for us, you know, we had a lot of nerves, um, especially after the world record and we went through the semi-final. Um, and of course now we're in the race that we've pretty much worked towards for the last four years.